Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Are You In? Now, we are almost halfway through the year with June finishing up this weekend, uh, but I didn't want to leave it without talking about one more album for 2017 before we go on to some new stuff. Um, and this one's going to be awesome. Uh, this is another one of these albums that I listened to after 2017, uh, and if I did listen to it during then, it would have made my list. Uh, a friend of mine from work told me all about it, showed me a couple of their songs, and uh, I listened to it, and uh, I have a lot to say, of course. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get her to join me for this album review as my special guest, but it's all good. Uh, we'll carry on without her. So, not dilly-dallying. Dilly the album that I'm talking about tonight is uh, the Dirty Projectors' newest album, entitled Dirty Projectors. Uh, now, if you don't know who the Dirty Projectors are, they are an indie slash art rock slash electronica band from Brooklyn, New York. Their lineup has had plenty of iterations over the years, but currently it's just David Longstreff with a couple of additional member uh, m musicians on the album to help out. Uh, the previous studio albums include The Glad Fact, 2003, as well as Morning Better Last in 2003, Slaves, Graves, and Ballads in 2004, The Getty Address in 2005, Rise and Buff in 2007, Bit Orcra in 2009, don't know if it's Bit, Bitty, I don't know, and Swing Low Magellan in 2012. Um, now, I have heard of this band before, uh, but never really listened to them. I believe I have heard of the, the album Swing Low Magellan, and I'm pretty sure it got some pretty good reviews. Uh, but I had not listened to any of it, like I said, until my friend uh, showed me a little bit of it on uh, a way home from work when we were uh, driving, and she was like, hey, i got to show you these two songs. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to check it out. Uh, so how do I like it? Well, I, I say it's in the top 50, of course. That means I like it. But why do I like it? Well, um, this is a one of the best breakup albums that I've heard in a very, very long time. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful album. And for, for those of you who don't know like the background of it, um, this album itself um, is about um, David Longstreet's relationship uh, with Amber Kaufman, who was a member of this band. Um, and they were together until uh, not too long ago. They broke up. She went there. She went a separate way, and he kept this particular band. Um, so this whole entire album is about him dealing with um, this particular um, f feelings that he felt in general over the last you know amount of time since they've broken up. Um, and it's beautifully done. Um, there's a lot of very poignant lyrics throughout the, the, the album, and there's a lot of beautiful yet hectic yet, you know, energe hectically energetic music um, on this album. Uh, now, I don't know, like, what the, this band usually is, but this is a very uh, electronic music kind of style, um, and a lot of produced ideas, um, but I love it. There's a lot of really good stuff on it, so, like, Right from the beginning, you get a song, my personal favorite, called Keep Your Name. Um, and it is phenomenal. It's absolutely spellbinding. Um, Longstreff uses um, his baritone range, and it sounds like it's potentially slowed down by uh, by computer. Um, and it's very haunting, especially with the, the harmonies as well being in that baritone range. Um, it's, it's, the melody is beautiful. Um, the music behind it is is subdued at first and then eventually um, picks up a little bit, especially during the bridge where you pick up the pace a little bit and, and it's a little bit more spoken dialogue um, uh, with him. It's almost like um, he's a beat poet at this point and it's talking about his relationship with Kaufman and even uses a uh, sample from um, another song from the Jury Projectors which it like hints at, the, at uh, his relationship with Amber called Impregnable Question. It's a warp sample of it um, that uh, is so interesting on there that, you know, you wouldn't have known it until, you know, you, you looked it up. Or if you are a huge um, Dirty Projectors fan, you might have known it. But, like, 
just the raw motion of it, of just talking about uh, going your separate way and saying that you, um, they, they'll keep on separate, but you keep your name. Um, just, it, which is like, what do I have? Like, what do I get to keep? Um, and it's a, a very interesting way to start this album. And then you get onto something like Death Spiral, which is another phenomenal song. Um, it does get a little bit weird in the bridge because of the auto-tune stuff. I personally don't like it that much, uh, but it's just another, it, like it goes from, um, from, you know, keep your name being like this slow paced song and a burner to this more upbeat electronic um, piece with some violence and piano, some percussion. Uh, it's just hectic and beautiful at the same time, um, and you definitely feel that with the the melody, with it being fast paced. Um, some interesting harmonies, some interesting contrasts in the low and high range. Um, I, I I really really like it, um, and it has one of my favorite lines on here, and one that like literally st stuck out to me the first time I heard it, which was one of the first songs that I heard because my friend showed it to me, and there's. A line going, feeling like I'm sipping on some Rene Descartes and you're big gulping the Bible. Uh, which, if I remember correctly, I believe Rene Descartes is a philosopher. I might be wrong on that. But, like, just, like, the idea of, like, I'm sipping on something, like, more sophisticated while you are just gulping down the Bible. Which, you know, may or may not mean, like, an original, uh, like, philosophical versus religious ideas. Anyways, um, it's showing like the contrast between him and Amber and talking about how their relationship is more of a death, like a helicopter going into death spiral uh, and it's just spiraling down. There's no way that they can do anything about it. Uh, just, just the lyrics work so well on this song. It's a beautiful, hectic song that's just keeping this idea of their relationship and talking about it. Um, you get something up in Hudson, which is, you know... It is a fantastic song. I would not be shocked if people think this is the best song on the album. It's really up there. It's in a journey. It's an eight-minute song, top, like chronologing, uh, chronologically uh, talking about um, David and Amber's relationship, and going over you know details of like how they they met through music, and that like I believe um, David asked Amber to come along with the band. And then, like, the relationship kept going, like, going on, even though, like, I guess they had other relationships going on at the same time, but they knew that something was good for this. It's a beautiful song that goes into detail about the relationship and, like, how it worked so well at the beginning and how much they were in love with each other um, in, the, in the middle and then at the end talking about now they're going their separate ways. And there's just some interesting, poignant details. Um, and they're talking about, like, how... She's going one way in New York, listening to uh, Tupac and drinking a fifth for his ass, and while he's blasting Kanye on the on the Hudson River Bridge or something like that, and just like the details work so well, it's a beautiful, beautiful song, like front to back, through with so much instrumentation, so many um, you know. You know, like dreamy parts where you have, you know, beautiful harmonies, beautiful horn parts, all these different things. And then the interesting thing to me that kind of like makes it that much deeper, at least to my perspective, is that you have this like during the chorus that it, it, it's always the same. It's like, and love will fall out and love will just fade away and love will burn out. And just talking about like, yeah, these things are going great, but then all of a sudden love will burn out and love will fade away uh, and love's going to rot. And during that, you get this like hit of like the tuba, just like boom, 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 which is like the almost only percussive part of this. And it's kind of like, like yeah, this is great, but snap back into reality of like, this will happen eventually. And it, it might be either... Uh, David's feelings during the relationship being like, this will fade eventually. Or after the relationship and being like, wow, this, ha this happened, but we knew this was going to end eventually. Um, and snapping back to reality while he's pondering this. It's a beautiful song. 
uh, if you if you were to listen to one or two songs on the album, Up in Hudson is one of the best songs to listen to, even if it is eight minutes long. Um, you get a song like Little Bubbles, which is... Um, there's some... It's a beautiful electronic ballad. And it has one of the... One of the most beautiful melodies on this album. Um, a lot of piano, a lot of strings... Um, it feels almost like a jazz ballad in, in different ways with a little bit of electronic mix into it. Um, and it just works so well. Um, David's falsetto just is so beautiful over it. And there's some interesting harmonies right before the chorus. Um, the music itself is talking about um, David picturing being back with Amber and being in bed um, and just like morning at the break of day, talking about what did you dream of, uh, do you still remember what you dreamt, um, and just beautiful, beautiful looking into a relationship and being like, we had our own little bubble for a little while, um, you know, we had this bubble, even when everything else was going wrong, we still had this bubble where we were together, and then it pans to a point after the relationship where he is all alone and he's talking about that and like he'd rather not dream because it'll just be nightmares like what does he get to talk about you know it's a as someone as any of us who've ever gone through breakups and relationships you know and the difference between it it's a it's a it's a poignant song it, it really touches you a little bit uh, so that's one of the better songs on the album. And like this whole entire album is a journey through his psyche and going through all the feelings that he has felt. Um, you know, even if not all the songs are great, uh, but um, it, most of it is it's just the journey itself that you have to go through. Um, I, even though I would say, you know, after you get to like a fifth song, the six through nine are aren't great, but they're not bad. That's the thing. Um, I would say the next best song is "Cool Your Heart," and it it has this kind of um, kind of like ska ish kind of feel, this island kind of feel, and it's a interesting song um, that kind of takes away from this. Um, I guess it kind of takes away from the message of it. I, I don't know how I see this in terms of everything else. I guess it would just be like him start, trying to start anew because it's the second to last song on the album. I guess it's him trying to love again. Um, and I do like the little touch of like Lost on the Sea of Love motifs uh, that work with this island feel, this reggae feel. Don Richards is also on this and she does a great job, uh, especially during her harmonies on the chorus. and as well as this call and response thing that she does with David. Um, but, it, I mean, it's a, it's a weirder type of song comparatively to everything else, but it's also a very nice song. Um, but then, like, everything else is kind of an for me. It's not bad. It just doesn't do as much as everything else. So you got the last song on the album, I See You, which is a, a very optimistic way of looking at the future for him. Um, the, the music is slow and simple, giving room for the reflection and hopefully a start of a new chapter for him. Um, and it's nice how, like, how the, the music is more positive on this, this song, even though I don't like most of the music on it. Um, but it's a nice part for self-reflection. And now he's seeing that the, these the image of this person that's now fading away and coming back into something more of a person rather than the relationship itself. It's it's a nice poignant way of ending it. Um, I just, I don't know. The music for me doesn't work as well as some of these these other ones. It's not as interesting. Um, Ascent, Ascent Through Clouds is another one of these interesting songs that are multi-layered, um, which has more of a like acoustic guitar, Bonnie Bear kind of feel at the beginning. And then it's kind of like this, um, this like look into his psyche where it's kind of like his left and right brain are talking. Um, and it's, it, it's, it gets a little bit faster and, and, and each side is kind of talking about how they feel in one way or another. It's an interesting song, but again, not one of my favorites. You get also something, the other two honestly to me are kind of just, 
out there, work together. It's a little bit really out there uh, for for the beautiful piano intro that it has. It just gets very, very weird. It almost sounds like a lot like um, like like what I talked about in my top ten albums of 2017, Jill. It kind of feels like that type of percussive kind of sound. Um, and it just doesn't work for me at all. Um, but it's not, it's a good experimentation. I just don't really like it. It's just really out there. Um, and then Winner Take Nothing is kind of that really forgettable song to me. Uh, even though it's talking, like the, the lyrics themselves are nice. But it's kind of really forgettable for me. Um, but again, this isn't an album that you've listened to um piece by piece this is an album that you need to listen to front to back to feel everything that's going on and you know it's a very poignant album through and through like this is david's uh, you know um thoughts and feelings after breaking up with amber but this these thoughts and feelings i definitely have felt them through uh relationships and through uh breakups and i bet you a lot of other people have as well uh, so, you know, it, it's it's his own um, experiences, but those experiences are so relatable, and that's what I love about this album, is that it takes these poignant lyrics, this, this interesting and complicated music, and it makes it so relatable to everybody else. So, you know, if you've been through breakups, or if you're going through a breakup right now, or you are, you know, feeling alone, all those things, definitely take a listen to this. Um especially for the arc. It's a, it's a beautiful arc. The music is well done. It's only nine songs long. It's probably about like 40 minutes, but like it's definitely worth it. The beginning, the beginning couple tracks sell me on it and then everything else is just that, you know, it's just, um, you know, adding a little bit more. It's layering a little bit more. Even if I don't think the payoff is great, I think the lyrics are great. I think the message is interesting. And it's a, an album that needs to be listened to, you know, even if you aren't going through breakups. If you like interesting electronic music or if you like an interesting concept album, give it a listen. I, I think you will enjoy it. Um, I probably would have put it in my top 20 for the year if I had listened to it. That's how good it is. So thank you so much, um, you know, uh, for taking a listen to this. And also thank you to my friend for... Uh, recommending this album to me because I think it was right up my alley and I think it was perfect. Um, you know, there are some downsides to it, but I think the, 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 the whole outweighs the, the, the sum outweighs the parts, you know? So this is my last album I'm talking about for 2017 and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, you know, if anything, I hope I gave you an album to listen to that you may not have listened to especially with the 2017 albums. Maybe you found something interesting that you didn't listen to before. If I can do that, then hey, I'm doing my job. Uh, now, the interesting thing is, Terry Projectors are also putting out a new album literally a couple weeks from now. So I will be talking about that. Maybe I'll bring my friend on if they're available. And, you know, from the two songs that I've listened to so far, I'm really curious about this album. I think I'm going to like it a lot. Um, it seems a little bit more upbeat, at least. Uh, so... That is my time. If you like what I'm talking about, of course, A, like it, like this video so that you, though I know that you enjoy what I'm talking about, share it with your friends so they may have something new to listen to. Um, you know, comment on things I can do better or albums that I missed in 2017 that maybe didn't even make my top 50 that I need to listen to. Um, you know, subscribe to my channel. This is the biggest thing that you can do because that helps me out so much. I know it gets me to know that you are enjoying what I'm doing and want to see more of what I do. And finally, just keep watching my videos. Now, this is the last album from 2017 that I am reviewing, but that doesn't mean that I won't be doing more reviews. In fact, next week, we are st I am starting my newest series. It is going to be called Digging Through Discographies, and that means I'm going to be talking about a band's entire discography and doing a couple a uh, couple of weeks on a band and its discography its history how it got to where it was you know all the the impetuses and all the reasons why a certain album came out and you know comparing it to everything else and making a huge uh, an actual hierarchy of their albums so that if you want to listen to them 
you know which one to listen to first and which ones to skip. So I'm going to be starting with that. And, you know, I'll give you one hint about which I'm going to be starting with. But honestly, if I tell you, you know, in the end, it doesn't really matter. So that's your hint. And I will see you next week for the start of my brand new series. Peace.